Okay, so uh, my, my name is Stephen Green. Uh, I'm an English teacher, teacher trainer, and I write some materials. And I live in Curitiba in, in the south of Brazil. And for the last year or so, last couple of years, I've been working on a project uh, about linguistic landscapes. And so for this talk, I'd like to take you through my journey through a linguistic landscape. So this first slide shows some of the things from my linguistic landscape here in Curitiba. Uh, we've got a newspaper. Uh, one day they, uh, they uh, published the, the whole front page in English. Uh, uh, below the newspaper, we've got an advert from a, 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 a restaurant in English saying, eat like a pig. Uh, in the middle, we have a, a, an advertising campaign that ran during the, the recent Football World Cup, uh, talking about uh, uh, sexual abuse and that no means no. Uh, this was produced in uh, a number of different languages, uh, English, Spanish, Russian, German. Uh, top right is a, a, a bin outside a bar here in Curitiba. Uh, it took me a, a while to figure out what it was about, but it's a... Uh, it was uh, about Amy Winehouse and Bob Marley. And then finally, in the bottom right, there's a bit of graffiti saying that God is dead. I found this very interesting that somebody decided to graffiti this on a wall in English. Uh, I would have assumed it would be Portuguese. So walking around the city, uh, we see lots of language. Uh, obviously, most of it is in Portuguese, but there is a lot of English there as well and other languages. Uh, and this is how my journey started. Uh, the, the first picture that you can see here is my son. Uh, he's now four years old, but uh, about two years ago he was obsessed by Mickey Mouse and Disney, all things Disney. Thankfully he's got out of that obsession now, he's more into superheroes. Uh, yes, he is very cute when he's not crying and demanding things, but anyway. he. Uh, it was one day here in Curitiba, it was raining and there was nothing to do, so I took him out to a shopping centre and we were just wandering around the shopping centre and all of a sudden he ran off towards a window and this window was for a, a, a travel agent. And the reason he had run off was because he saw in the top corner, he saw a picture of Mickey Mouse. And this got me thinking about the language, the images that he sees around him all the time and that I wasn't paying attention to. And so for the rest of the day, I was, I was pay, paying a lot more attention to the language that I could see in the shopping center. Uh, the names of shops, the, the images that they used to, uh, to promote things. And that kept going. And I started paying a lot more attention to everything that I could see, not only in shopping centers, but around the streets as I was going around the city. And I started to take photographs to, to help myself to remember them. And I did a bit of research, and I found out that this is linguistic landscapes. Uh, oops, that hasn't come up. Uh, a linguistic landscape can be made up of leaflets. Uh, it can be made up of signs. Uh, signs here would be a very broad uh, top, uh, subject. It can be anything from uh, signs on shops, road signs, I even include graffiti in this idea of science. Uh, it can also be the names of buildings. It can be uh, 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 official signs and unofficial signs. Uh, and also, advertising is a great source of informing your linguistic landscape. Uh, advertisers take great uh, care and uh, revel in playing with language. Uh, the uh, these languages, these examples of language can be from businesses, they can be from government, or they can be personal. Sometimes it's a message that somebody has written and stuck on a lamppost or something. Uh, so I started to realize that I was learning a lot of Portuguese uh, by looking at my, at my linguistic landscapes. Uh, and I thought, well, there's also a lot of English, so why can't we bring this into the classroom? 
Uh, I found this, uh, a, this example of an activity from Scott Thornbury and his uh, A to Z of English language teaching. I've adapted a little bit, but what I would do is I started off by taking some photos of language that I had found into the classroom. And I would give them a survey, these 10 questions. And I'd put students into pairs or small groups, and I'd ask them to work through the questions looking at the images. And I was shocked at the uh, response that I got. Students were uh, so interested in the language that I had found because it was relevant to them. They could place it. They knew where it was. When I told them the address, they'd say, oh, they went past that 100 times. Uh, but I'd never noticed it before. Like me, before I was out with my son, I'd, this language was all there, but I just hadn't uh, realized what I was taking in. Uh, and so these questions generated lots of discussion. Uh, some of the students went off and took their own uh, photographs and brought them into classes later on. And this really got me thinking about how else I could uh, integrate linguistic landscapes into my teaching. Uh, so another activity uh, was I got a few photographs and I cropped them. And then I asked the students what they think these uh, the cropped images were from. Uh, a very simple activity. Uh, the first one is from a, 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 an advert for an apartment building. Uh, the second one, day, was for a music festival. And the third one, crystal, was for uh, a, a, a nightclub here in Curitiba. Uh, but the language that this generated uh, was fantastic. We were able to practice uh, lots of language for making suppositions. And again, the students were fascinated. They had seen these adverts around the city. They, had, they knew the nightclub. Uh, some of them guessed what they were, others didn't. Uh, but again, it got students talking about language. And some of these classes, they would continue to bring in uh, examples of their own photographs that they had found for weeks and months afterwards. And so, I think I, I was able to answer for myself why I use linguistic landscapes. Uh, one of the reasons is interaction. The students interact with each other and the images, but they're also interacting with their uh, landscape, with, with the, the language that they see around them. Uh, it's very democratic. Uh, there is no, no uh, restrictions on what you can see. The only thing you need to do is go out and look at language. Uh, you might want to take a photograph, or people could write it down, or people draw pictures of it. Uh, it, in, it works on critical thinking. One of the main things that always come out of these sessions is, why have they chosen to use English? Why not Portuguese? Uh, and so students start to question what language they're seeing in front of them, and then what effect that has on their culture. Uh, and it is part of our culture. Uh, I love seeing different languages, but just to accept it without uh, questioning it, I think, is, is the wrong way to go. Uh, it's accessible to all, it's similar to the democratic idea that everybody, no matter how rich, how poor you are, you have access to your linguistic landscape. Uh, it helps learning. Uh, walking down the street now is a way of learning English, uh, because English is there all around us. And for me, it's just very interesting. And I think anybody interested in language would find this interesting. And if we're not going to find this interesting, then we perhaps shouldn't be working as, in, as language teachers. Uh, so I, I was doing this in, uh, uh, in my classes. And I went to Braz T. Sol two years ago. And I was talking to a friend, Damien Williams, who was on here earlier. And he was also interested in the same ideas. And so we started a project together. Uh, we now have a, a website. I'll give you the, the, the link in a moment. Uh, we have a, a Facebook group. And we have a Flickr page uh, where we post photographs. Uh, the Facebook group is probably the, the, the center of what we do. We've got over 3,000 members from all over the world. And the idea is that anybody can post a photograph of any interesting language. What do you mean by interesting? Well, that's up to you. If you find it interesting, it's interesting. And we will have a look at the language. We've generated some amazing discussions. We've learned a lot. 
And in these photographs, we try to put them onto a map so that we can map the urban linguistic landscape. Uh, there is also talk about a book, if I can get around to writing it. Damien Williams and I will be writing this book. Uh, it should be done very, very shortly, and it's going to be published through the round. Uh, I would urge everybody here to come along and join us on our Facebook group. Uh, you can find us very easily just by typing more into the search bar and looking for groups. If you want the address, it's there. Uh, we are a fantastic group. We uh, are very supportive of each other. We're asking lots of questions about language. And the, the, the images that you see, there are uh, some of them are amazing. Uh, we have a site that I mentioned where we interview people who are interested in linguistic landscapes. We have a, a Flickr page. If you want to get in touch with me, my email is stephen at tmenglish.org. And I have my own personal blog where I write about uh, bringing up a bilingual family in, in the south of Brazil. And you hear more about my son, uh, Mr. T. So thank you very much for this opportunity.